everyone. This is Hal Stead, Quail Studios Guitar. How you doing? Live stream today. I usually start, I like to start a little teeny bit after the hour. And that's because we need to just draw in some more people. Okay, let's get started. I don't see anybody on the chat. That's fine. I'm going to pull up my notes here and start talking. There we go. So let's see here. Um, let me get my cursor over here. You know, I'm never, I never quite feel like I'm, I'm ready for the, uh, for the live stream. Uh, good morning, Lisa. How are you doing today? Yes, it's good to see you. All right. So today we're going to talk about the kind of effort and energy it takes to play the guitar and to have fun at playing the guitar. We're also going to talk about playing songs and playing exercises and which one is more important, songs or exercises. We're going to talk a little bit about practice. And uh, for those of you who don't practice very much, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, we're going to talk about repertoire. Repertoire is um, the songs that you can play. Let's see here. And uh, I'm going to give you tips about, you know, going and, and getting started and all of that kind of thing. Hey, Bob, how you doing? And we've got Edouard. Hello from Turkey. Good morning. And actually, Turkey, gosh, I think Turkey is about nine hours ahead of us, something like that. So it's about 6 p.m. in Turkey. Welcome. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what it takes to get started on guitar. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, hold on just a second. Let me just check my, my stream here. Everything looks normal. <laughs> okay, if, if there's any problems, you let me know, all right? All right. Let me pull my notes back up here. Okay, so I, I was thinking about energy expended when we're, when we're actually playing the guitar, when we're getting started and that kind of thing. You know, there's a lot of energy that we expend right at the beginning and it seems like we're not getting anywhere. And we get a little frustrated and it's like, ah, it just doesn't seem like I'm really moving very quickly. And I know that feeling uh, because I felt that when I first started guitar. And uh, actually when I decided to make a, a decision, okay, I'm gonna be a guitar player. I had actually been playing on and off for a couple of years, but I made a decision uh, when I was 14 years old, I started when I was 12. When I was 14, I said to myself, okay, I do want to be a guitar player. <laughs> I, I definitely do. And so I made an effort to get a different guitar, a good guitar. And I'll share that with you sometime about my first guitar. It was horrible. But uh, anyway, you know, I was thinking about uh, the Rocket program back in uh, 1960s uh, when we went to the moon. And uh, the Saturn V rocket, and I'm going to show you a really quick video just a second ago, just in a second, about the uh, Saturn V rocket and the launch, and it'll only take a few seconds. Um, the Saturn V was a really big rocket. It was like 360-something feet, say like 365 feet tall. I think the biggest rocket that, that we've ever sent into space um, so far. The uh, Rocketdyne engines, the Rocketdyne F1 engines were huge. There were five of them in the first stage. And each engine um, created 1.5 million pounds of thrust each. There were five of them. That means there was 7.5 million pounds of thrust combined. They expended in the first stage of that rocket 500,000 gallons of fuel in the first stage. The total burn time was 168 seconds. And uh, I'm going to show you that video right now. Just really quick. Let's see here. I've got to get things moving here. So, okay, I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. All right, so here's my screen. And here's the launch. Now there's the firing. It takes about six seconds for that before they actually let the rocket go. 
and then it takes about 10 more seconds before it clears the tower. And there it goes. And then it really starts to accelerate. Oops. All right, let's take that off the screen. <laughs> okay. Now, that it's an amazing rocket. It really is. And I watched, I think, every launch because I'm that old, right? Okay, let's go back to my notes here. Um, so what happened was that there's a lot of energy expended right at the beginning of the launch. Like I said, it fires about six seconds before they actually let it go so that it gets up to speed. And so if there's a problem, they can shut it down. And then they let the, the rocket go. And uh, in the first, now when it clears the tower, it's gone about 400 feet or so. Uh, that's what I tried to figure out. And like I said, there's 500,000 gall 500, gallons of fuel in that first stage. And in the first 400 feet, it expends 47,500 gallons of fuel to just clear that tower. And the first stage will take it up to a height of 38 miles. So 9.5% of the fuel is expended and the rocket only reaches the height of 400 feet. That's, 9 5, that's a little less than 10% of the fuel that they have. But the whole um, first stage will take them up to a height of 38 miles, which is 200,640 feet. So the rocket's first stage expends 10% of the fuel to reach a height of 400 feet, which is only 2% of the potential and uh, and then it takes, you know, like 100 and, what was it, 150 more seconds to get up to 38 miles. So what happens is that there's a lot of energy expended right at the beginning. And this what happens when you play the guitar, when you're learning your chords, you know, like when you're learning your, your open position chords and things like that. Right? And a lot of times it's very unfamiliar to us. So... Right, we, uh, we start to play chords. In fact, the C chord is kind of hard for beginners sometimes, especially the F chord, right? Isn't that what you think? Especially the F bar. But this one too, that one's tough. And so what I've found from my teaching over the years is that I found that it takes about 250 hours to really get to the point where you're really enjoying yourself on guitar. You know, to where you can play a lot of chords and you can start to play bar chords. And uh, actually, you're probably playing quite a few bar chords by then and uh, be able to really get around on the guitar and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so if you're a beginner and you find that you're not practicing every day, I would say, why don't you practice like five minutes a day? You know, just say, OK, I'm going to practice five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day or make a goal and just say, I'm going to practice every day. Now, uh, Lisa, who is watching this live stream, <laughs> she practices hours a day. She's told me that. And it's great and it's wonderful. Uh, but if you're not practicing at all, pick up your guitar for five minutes and do something. Right? Do an exercise, go through some chords. Sometimes what I'll do is when I'm waiting uh, to go somewhere, like I'll be ready at 10 to 6 and I'm going to be leaving at 6 p.m. you know or something to go to a restaurant or, or whatever go to somebody's house and I'm, I've got 10 minutes and I'm like what do I do well I can't just sit down and start making a video or start editing a video usually it, it doesn't work very well so I'll just pick up my guitar and play a little bit you know maybe I'll play something that I played before just a little review or I'll do a an exercise and I'm going to talk about an exercise that I've been working on just lately that uh, I'm actually going to do a video on later. But, um, okay, so what I'm saying is if you, if you make a decision and you say, okay, I'm going to practice for five minutes every day, you pick up your guitar, you start playing. Now, unless you have a deadline like I was talking about, then you'll probably play for six or seven or eight or ten or thirty minutes or something like that. And that happens to me. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you only play for five minutes a day, to reach that 250 hours that I talked about, it's going to take you 8.2 years, 
right, to get there. But if you practice an hour a day, it'll only take eight months. So you decide, you know, how fast you want to go. And I think it does take quite a bit of time just to get off the ground, just like you saw on that rocket. It just, just takes time. And, uh, and that's okay, right? Because you learn a lot. And there's a lot of en energy expended, but you have to be patient. You have to be like a child. You have to be like a little child. And be patient with yourself and be excited about your little progress. Usually when we get older, we're like, oh, I'm not making any progress. Because you're able to listen to music that's really complicated, but you can't play that yet. All right, just be patient, right? And try to be, uh, try to be patient with uh, your progress. So yeah, if you practice for two hours a day, it'll only take you four months. And then you can decide, you can figure out, you know, if I practice three hours a day, then it'll only take me three months, you know, a little less than three months. Four hours a day, it'll take me, you know, a little over two months or something like that. So um, you decide how much you want to play. Now, I love my job uh, because I teach guitar and piano. That's why I have a piano here. And I play a lot, you know, a lot. In fact, after this live stream and after I hang out with my uh, supporters for a little while today, I'm going to be teaching a piano lesson. It'll be great. This actually forces me um, to play the guitar, to play the piano, right? And that's one thing I li love about my job. All right. Um, I'm, you know, I'm always in the process of learning, even now. You know, I'm actually, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> but I've been playing a long time. Um, I, I, I play the guitar, I play the piano, I play the bass, I play the ukulele. In fact, yesterday I did a, a recording session where I laid down a guitar part and a bass part, brought in some singers. We did a recording session for an ad that they want to put on the radio. Uh, that was really fun. And uh, anyway, and yesterday I also rebuilt a carburetor on a rotor tiller. Yeah, I did. Um, I've, I've rebuilt, you know, carburetors before. Back in the 1990s, I had a Honda Accord that my father-in-law gave us. And uh, and the carburetor, I mean, it just stopped working very well. And so I rebuilt the carburetor, and it worked great. So I thought, well, maybe I can do this to the rototiller. So I looked up a YouTube video, and, you know, yesterday I rebuilt a rototiller carburetor and it hadn't run for at least six years and maybe a lot longer. I, I know it didn't run for six years because it's been in my property for six years and I haven't run it at all. So, you know, YouTube videos can be really, really good. And also, talking about YouTube videos, I was looking at uh, Rick Beato the other day. And uh, I like to look at his shorts. You know, he has he goes, quick lesson, and then he plays, you know, something and shows you what he's doing, and it's like less than a minute. And he goes through this thing, and I'm thinking, oh, I love that. That's really good. I'm going to try that. Well, I spent, literally, I've spent probably four hours on understanding this video, working on this video, and I'm going to show it to you, just a little piece of it, in just a second. Um, it's called What Are Haunting Tones? It's a short that Rick Beato did a few days ago. Uh, let's, let's just show you. So, let me pull this up again. I'm going to sh share my screen with you. Now this is, all right, here we go. Check it out. That's the video. So it's a little bit longer, you know, because he says like that at the end. And there's also a little explanation at the beginning. But on that particular video, he was using a, a D minor chord and then a C chord. And that sounds out of tune. Let me retune. Boy, I cannot stand it when my guitar goes out of tune. I need to put new strings on this guitar. That's one thing I definitely need to do. I'm going to turn this down so you guys can't hear it. Oh, that's why it's out of tune. Oh. You know, once you put new strings on, my intonation just gets better and it stays in tune longer. Okay, I think I got it. 
Yeah, that's better. Okay. So this particular um, exercise that he did is based on three different chords. It's in D minor. And um, he played in the, I don't know, in the background, you could hear the chords, D minor, C, B flat, C, D minor. Right? And he played this exercise over the top of it. He calls it an etude. You know, he likes to make up etudes. Now, like a day after he did this short, he did a video on and explaining this particular thing. Um, and I, I really liked it. I thought it was great. Let me, uh, let me pull up the chat here and see what's going on. Lisa Doe, I practice one hour in the morning and 30 minutes in the middle of the day and two hours in the evening. Oh, that's great. Don, hello. Good morning. Albert, hello, <laughs> Albert. Welcome. Besh Wishes from Liverpool. I love it. Very good. Orion Quest. Hello. There you go. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about this because you know what I did was I did screenshots of that particular uh, exercise. You know, on the top of the, the thing, it had a little, you know, thing that he was doing up there, a little screenshot. And so I did screenshots of this and I put it on a piece of paper like this and I looked at him and I was like, okay, here it goes. So I started to work on this and I found, I thought that this Rick Beato, you know, I've, I've looked at Rick Beato shorts before and sometimes it's like, oh, that looks easy, right? <laughs> this one was harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, I've literally worked on this for a few hours and uh, finally got it memorized and all that kind of stuff. But let me show you just a, a piece of it. I'm going to take my pick out, not use a pick for the moment. So it goes like this. That's the first arpeggio that's based on a mode. You know, he said he's going to base it on the Mixolydian mode and the Lydian mode and something else. So um, it's pretty cool. I really like it a lot. So what he's doing, he's going from string to string. And he does a slide, and then he does a hammer on, and then he goes up to this note. So he's he's going across a bunch of strings, pull off, slide down, changing strings again. And I really like that. I thought it was really great, so I've been working on it. So he does this one. Does it twice, and then he does a variation on that. changes the top note, and then he changes it a little bit. And then he reaches up here. Oops, wrong note. And so this spans one, two, three, four, this spans five frets. Now, I don't know if you know this, but um, if you looked at my um, videos before about, let's see, on May 4th, 2017, I broke my, broke my wrist. And I broke my hand about six years ago. Um, the knuckle right here. And I wonder if this stretch that I'm, if I'm having trouble with has to do with that. But, you know, when I watch Rick Beato do it, it looks so effortless and he's so fast at it. It's just amazing. But you know what? I found that that's, right? It's a little hard for me. But then I realized that that note that he's playing here is actually here too. Let me put the, uh, the camera down a little bit for you. So he's going like this, right? And I found out that you could do it like this. Oops. Instead of going, you can go. And then he goes back to that original and does this note. Then he goes down two frets because he's doing that C chord. And then he does this where he reaches up another, you know, skips over three frets. But I found out that you could play that note. So I play that one. And then he goes down another two frets because he's on B flat. And then he changes. And then he ends, and then he plays a 
a minor scale going down. Then he does an uh, chord at the end. So it's interesting because um, in in figuring out this particular song, I just I'm not it's not a song it's an etude it's just a uh, an exercise and you know what you can if you don't have very much time let me get my script up back here so I can look if you don't have very much time you can actually just do an exercise like that. I'm just using my fingers, but you can do it with a pick too, right? If you want to. Right? And so you can do it many different ways. I like to use my hands, and we're going to talk in just a second about finger picking for just a moment too. So um, I'm going to actually do just a video on that particular exercise later. That's what I'm planning on doing. But. Uh, Let's go to uh, a question that um, a guy named Alexander had not too uh, long ago. He had a question about um, a video that I made about finger picking. And I want to look at you again. And this is what he asked. He said, uh, hello, Hal. How, how, did, how do I decide whether to switch to five fingers? Now, I'm going to show you in just a minute. <laughs> about um, finger picking. Now I do have several finger picking videos and I have a playlist about finger picking but this one that he's talking about is it says finger picking two, three, four, or five fingers. Now some people I've seen you know only use two fingers when they're finger picking. Right and they'll do something like that. And other people will use three fingers. Let's see. There's two fingers, and then some people use three fingers. And some people will use four fingers. Now, classical guitar, a lot of times uh, in classical guitar, they don't even talk about using the pinky at all. And Alexander asked, let's see, uh, let me read this. He says, I feel comfortable with four fingers only today. Now my patterns sound really good and fluid but it bugs me that the pinky is unused. I assume that playing with five is only better? That's the question that he had. And, um, you know, because when you play with five fingers, if you're going like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, let me put the camera down again. So, Let's see if I can get this to... Right, so I'm, I'm doing a C chord, playing a C chord. And I'm using five fingers. Now I don't use my, my pinky by itself a lot. I usually use it in order like this. Or sometimes I'll go like that or where I'll do that and use my ring finger and my pinky finger together G chord right because really if you've noticed if you try to just bend your pinky by itself right what happens? At least for me, and I think most people, if you just try to bend your pinky, this finger goes too. Now I can bend that finger, my ring finger, by itself, no problem, my middle finger, my index finger, and my thumb, but my pinky, right, my ring finger wants to go, and then also the other fingers want to go too. And I think the reason for that is what happens is that, you know, some people don't understand this, but the muscles that, that control your fingers are actually in your forearm right here. Here, let's, let's go back up again like this. So when I go like this, if you look at your hand, the muscles here 
you'll notice that they contract and, and yeah, like that. So there's muscles on both sides of your hand. I, I don't know anatomy very well, but I know that that's what happens, right? And there are tendons that go into your hands like that on both sides. And so when you pull your fingers back, you can see the muscles contracting. You can see the tendons moving right there. Now, I don't, I don't know if you can see mine. Do it, do it yourself, right? Or you can turn it over and look at it, and you've got these tendons that go like this. Now, there's one tendon that connects these two fingers, your ring finger and your pinky finger, so that when you go like that, this one pulls too, right? So that the pinky is not as independent. So if I'm going like this, and I'm using five fingers, and that's fine, I can also go like this. I can take four fingers, these three fingers right here, my index, middle, and ring, and I can put them on the first three strings. My ring finger will be on the first string, my middle finger will be on the second string, my index finger will be on the third string, and my thumb can go back and forth like this. The thumb is amazing. It moves back and forth. See, I go thumb, thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index, thumb, thumb. So I'm hitting two uh, bass notes with my thumb. Low notes. Same thing with a G chord. Now in classical guitar, that's what that's what uh, guitarists do. They basically just use their thumb, index, middle, and ring, and that's about it. It doesn't really matter if you use your pinky. I mean, you can. I, you know, when I'm going... Right, I do use my pinky then. Oops, sorry. More than words. Right, and I use all five fingers. So I have developed over the years, you know, the ability to use all of my fingers when I'm doing some serious finger picking though, I usually leave my pinky out. But if it's just something like that, or if it's just something like that, I'll employ my pinky too. Um, but you know, for independence and for speed, I leave my pinky out of it. So to answer, you know, Alexander's question, he says, um, I've exercised for six months very casually, but only finger picking, and it was surprisingly easy to switch from four fingers to four fingers from three fingers in the last few weeks, and now it really works. But I'm thinking that given that I'm still very new, maybe it's best to switch to five fingers as early as possible so I can build the me motor memory on the correct final fingers. Uh, anyway, you know, she's like, is, is, he says, if there, is there any real benefit to using the pinky? Um, I think I've talked about that. You know, the benefit is you can add another string like that, right? But if you're doing some serious finger picking like that, right? I use four fingers on that particular thing, even though that Carrie Livegren only uses three, but I use four because it. I love to use, assign four fingers to four different strings. <laughs> I'm looking at uh, Dean, and he's saying opposable thumbs, greatest invention ever. Love it. Um, Bob, can you share that exercise sheet on Patreon? Yes, I can. I will do that. And uh, not only will I do that, in fact, I have some notes written on there too. But I'll explain a little bit more in depth. Um, I'm still working on it. I really like that exercise because it gets you all over the the um, the neck, you know, all over the strings and everything. And you can use your fingers or you can use your pick to exercise that. It's something that I'm working on. I really love it. There's another exercise, kind of neoclassical exercise that uh, Rick Beato did that I'm going to break down. I haven't done that quite yet really pretty, really great. I love neoclassical, you know, um, prog rock and stuff like that. Um, you know, like Yes and and Kansas and those kinds of things. Uh, that's really fun. Anyway, um, let's see. Is there anything else we need to talk about? 
We've talked about um, so we've talked about you know there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, energy expended right at the beginning and uh, you know some of the things that you should be working on are changing back and forth between chords really quickly you know going back and forth being able to change a less than one second going from C chord to an F chord back you know bum, 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 bum. or bar chords you know working on um, different kinds of bar chords um, and a lot of times let's talk it just for a moment because I said I was going to do this we'll do one last thing I said I was going to talk about um, where's my notes repertoire repertoire and technique um, you can actually get good technique from the repertoire that you are studying what I mean by that is let's say you're you want to do uh, you know tears in heaven by Eric Clapton <laughs> I want to do that. Well, if you've never done finger picking before, you probably shouldn't just jump right into that. But I promise that if you've never played that song, you'll probably get some new chords that you've never played before. A um, couple of them. Uh, new techniques and that kind of thing. And, you know, it's the same way with other songs that you can play. Uh, just about anything that an intermediate and beginner guitarist will, uh, you know, start to play, they're going to learn new techniques. They're going to run into techniques and, and repertoire that uh, chords and different kinds of things that they've never done before and so it's going to be a challenge for them. So you know once you've been playing for quite a while it's a little more rare to get something completely new but I'm telling you it's out there and one of the things that I'm really good at is explaining uh, some of the techniques that other people are doing like Rick Beato or Adam Neely or uh, David Bennett piano you know he talks about theory and things like that I listen to all these guys um, oh, there's a bunch of others too I don't have them in my head right now but um, you know get in touch with me and I'll help you explain I'll explain some of the things that they are doing I've been playing for a long time <laughs> long time and uh, let's see well thanks for coming along I appreciate you guys and ladies that are here with us and uh, appreciate your comments please give us a like if you don't mind. And uh, I'll be here next week. Oh, I want to tell you, I'm going to do the live stream a little later in the day because now that we're into summer, as soon as uh, the solstice hit a few days ago, three days ago, all of a sudden it's getting hot here where I am in Idaho. And I'd like to get out in the morning and actually do work in the morning and then, you know, like after noon, after, you know, 12 o'clock, it starts to get hot then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do my live stream then. Now for some of you who are in maybe the UK or something, so it's going to put the live stream a little bit farther into your day, maybe that'll be okay. I'll try not to do it too late, so it's 11 o'clock at night. I won't do that. But uh, it might be like 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night for you. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to do over the next uh, three months or so because it's going to be a lot warmer. I'm going to be working in the daytime in my garden and outside and different things like that and I'm going to be teaching in the afternoon and uh, working with people in the afternoon uh, when it's hotter. And then in the evening, here, it gets a little cooler and we get to go outside again and work some more. Anyway, thanks for being here. Love you. Um, Patreon, I've got a Patreon page in case you want to support me that way. I've got a subscribe star page and I, there is a link in the description that you can actually just donate directly to me through PayPal. And those people that do that, I send them out an, an email every week or a notice and they can they get a link and we do a, a hangout right after this and so probably I'm gonna get several people hanging out with me right after this and we're gonna have a good time you're welcome to come and do that um, and it doesn't cost very much it's not like it's you know fifty dollars a month or something like that um, you can just give a couple bucks and a few bucks and uh, join in well that's all I have for today thanks for being here we'll talk to you later so we're going to go.
See you later. Bye.